We never needed peace so much in the current context. But actually what I'm going to say for the next 10 minutes and tell you story about peace uh, in clinical context. So peace is really peaceful collaboration, co-production between all main stakeholders, but it stands for pathway for eating disorders and autism developed from clinical experience. It's very wordy title, but I can assure you that out of 30 um, names we uh, shared with our patient group, they choose peace and it was 2019. So wisdom of lived experience, they picked up peace acronym. So I'm very proud that it is very contextual in so many different ways. Here in this first slide, what I tried to uh, show you uh, that we started really small in 2019. You see my wonderful colleagues and collaborators, Madeleine Oakley, who um, is family therapist, but at the same time, she said uh, her son with autism, Madeline, was extremely helpful to help us to develop work with carers who care about people with autism and eating disorders. Pookie Knight-Smith, who has PhD in eating disorders, she did PhD some years ago with Ulrike and Janet, and she has lived experience of both autism and eating disorders and her help and contribution was invaluable and if any of you um, have patients of uh, with this comorbidity then I strongly suggest her YouTube channel which is excellent and here in the corner it's eight of us who started really and on launching Peace Pathway. It was Claire who I see in the audience, clinical psychologist, uh, consultant, uh, counseling psychologist, sorry, and Kate Williams who is our wonderful uh, dietitian who developed menus and specifically adjusted things for autism friendly pathway and young researchers um, who were working on their PhD projects at that time. So uh, we really wanted to make um, eating disorder treatment autism friendly because autism is neurodevelopmental condition and we treat eating disorders within uh, people with a neurodevelopmental condition, in this case with autism. So, um, as uh, Puki quite rightly says in her YouTube videos, I want to be friends with my autism, but I want to be treated from my eating disorders. And it's simpler to say than to do in the clinical practice. And it took us several years to collect clinical evidence, uh, research evidence to realize actually we needed to do something specific for people with autism and eating disorders. This is our um, everyday life and clinical audit and I'm very proud to say that we have quite nice clinical audit across our eating disorder department and when we looked at uh, possible autism presentation or diagnosed autism we found that almost a third of our patients might have autism or are already diagnosed with this condition. Then we compared data to research evidence and this is not uh, only our group who is reporting this. There are Italian groups uh, reporting 33% 33, uh, 33 of their cases being autistic in eating disorders specialist service. We have Swedish epidemiological studies demonstrating this uh, comorbidity and of course we have research evidence coming from experimental studies. Uh, 
I myself study um, cognition, emotional processing in eating disorders for last 30 years. But to put these two together, it takes time to sort of piece all these um, jigsaw puzzles together. So what you see on this slide, we have very clear and good evidence um, based on the meta-analysis, systematic reviews, that both um, uh, in autism and anorexia nervosa, people report that um, uh, patients, and in this uh, case, uh, people with autism, have inflexibility of thinking, they perform neurocognitive tasks, demonstrating cognitive rigidity. We also know that people are very good at details of the information and they have fantastic eye for detail versus bigger picture. There are certain similarities in, in emotion processing and emotion regulation. For example, we have fantastic uh, systematic reviews. I see Jess who authored one of the wonderful, very well cited paper on alexithymia in autism and eating disorders. We have clear similarities there. There are lots of good experimental studies suggesting that people with both conditions struggle to express their facial emotions or body language is less expressive. And lastly, uh, looking at Daniel in the audience, he's busy analyzing our neuroimaging data, which is probably largest data set looking at anorexia and autism. We have uh, scanned almost 200 people and we did it longitudinally. We scanned um, them, they are young people between 14 and uh, 25. Mima and um, her team were extremely helpful to support us in this study. So we have data um, for these people on behavioral uh, imaging um, data and we, we followed them up, up after three years. So more data to come from this very exciting biological study. So what I'm trying to say here, there is research-based evidence, clinical audit data, clinical observations and all these pathways led us to think outside of the box. Eating disorders are severe conditions. We heard about mortality rates. We know when we see patients with anorexia, especially in severe enduring and uh, all these studies started it from the inpatient ward, we are focused on the symptoms on people's well-being, survival. But we need to think outside of the box when it comes to neurodevelopmental condition combined with eating disorders. And I will show you later another very nice quote from Puki. Um, Anorexia and autism, it's like having autism on steroids when you have anorexia as well. So it's very powerful metaphor and we can imagine what it is like when someone is very underweight, malnourished and has autism as well. So thinking outside of the box probably was uh, uh, best uh, strategy for us to modify and make reasonable adjustments as one of the carers says about Peace Pathway to support people to benefit from eating disorder treatments as good as they can. So what was needed, first of all, needs assessment. And uh, James Adamson and Emma Kinnard, my past PhD student, did fantastic job interviewing all stakeholders, including clinicians, parents and families, and of course, people with lived experience who have these both conditions. To cut very long story short, I can go on about it because it's very rich qualitative data and material. We started to make adjustments in three very important areas. These are sensory, nutritional, 
communication needs and we do lots of um, techniques supporting uh, people with uh, these conditions and families and clinicians to help them to address their communication difficulties to highlight what are the sensory issues which we did not pay attention to quite a long time. For example, for someone, certain temperature food might be intolerable. Some people are very sensitive to green type of food. Some pe people prefer very blunt um, uh, food and uh, some people are very sensitive to certain textures. So exploring it and adjusting uh, menu to um, uh, people's sensory needs is a great idea and um, I'm very grateful to Kate Williams and uh, Caroline Pimblett who have done lots of work from their perspective and some um, dietary adjustments. So um, how do we know know that our adjustments work. We started Peace Project in 2019, as I said. Of course, COVID was not helpful. Lots of things moved online and it stopped us to be as productive as we wanted. But on the positive side, in terms of implementation and in terms of dissemination, it again forced us to think outside of the box and lots of good things came out of these efforts. Now, I know I have limited time, although one speaker dropped out, I, I would not try to abuse my time here. So how do we know that peace works? There are several measures uh, we can use. First of all, it is again qualitative assessment and we do know that our clinicians as well as patients are very happy with this innovation. We do know that um, uh, building up from Madeleine's work, these online care support groups, especially during the COVID, was highly appreciated and it was really valuable for families who have um, these problems. We do know from National Autism Society that they were very pleased with our innovation and we are first uh, department in the country and internationally who is accredited for um, autism friendly service. We are very proud of it and also uh, for the business case and to talk to NHS managers it is highly useful what Jolie my current PhD student did. She submitted PhD last week, is that right, John? And with help of Sarah Byford, who is our health economist and our expert in, in, um, insti in the Institute, we calculated costs and we found that we shortened admissions um, and also people who had autism and anorexia relapsed less during the peace pathway. So in economic and in terms of cost, it translates to quite impressive figures, but it varies across um, time frame. So I will not necessarily dwell on the details, but trust me on the, this word, it saves money as well as satisfies uh, people caring for this condition and who experience these conditions. And then my title had very ambitious um, sort of caveat, as Julian says. So peace nationally and internationally. When we started this work, I, I was attacked in one of the big international eating disorder meeting from my lovely friend Jim Locke. Rachel is smiling there. We are good friends, but he stood up in front of big audience like this and he said, I doubt we have patients with this comorbidity. What you are doing at Motsley, seeing all this uh, peculiar and complex presentations. But I'm glad to report that a few months ago I was invited actually in California to help them to set up specific pathway for people 
with eating disorders and autism. So things are changing and they are changing in right direction, I think. And uh, we have done quite a helpful free website and people are welcome to download from there everything we are developing because it is highly important that people um, take on the board immediately this comorbidity and try to understand people's communication patterns, sensory sensitivities, and all these resources are available for you. We have done book which is copyright protected, but from the website you can download lots of free material. So what I meant by peace nationally, um, our colleagues from Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire put together a proposal and NHS England was very generous. They put two and a half million um, in those services. Uh, we call it Bob project and they are trying to develop and first of all, implement Peace Pathway in their area. And secondly, we went more ambitious and we want to make very good adaptations for young people who have autism and eating disorders. Having said that, we are making efforts here at Motsley as well. In collaboration with Mima, Julian, we are trying to develop more modified versions of some family work and some other things which I will not expand on. And second national collaboration is we were just funded from MRC and I see Helen Sharp and Fiona Duffy. We have great plans to implement Peace Pathway further and explore and do more research in this area. In terms of international collaborations, we have lots of expression of interest from Scandinavian countries. We had 25 clinicians from Sweden visiting us in adult um, eating disorder department. Again, their government generously funded specifically to implement this peace pathway in their settings. So things are developing. I'm looking uh, forward to um, see policy changes and we are working hard with NHS England to uh, release uh, good clinical guidelines for clinicians where autism will be thought about. And I would like to thank all my colleagues and collaborators and I must say it was really pleasing exercise for me. I tried to fit uh, thank you and acknowledgement slide in one and I could not do it because all photos were um, we are in three slides, so we started eight people in the room and it is really pleasing. So next time when Ulrike gives me a little bit more time for the presentation, I will show you all our wonderful collaborators. And I do know that um, uh, Medical Research Foundation representatives are here. Thank you very much allowing research in this area, which translated to very significant changes for people who have autism and eating disorders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Kate. It was a very interesting um, presentation. So you talked about um, autism and anorexia. I was wondering if you have any thoughts on um, ADHD and obesity, which is in the other spectrum. Very good question. Um, I have some ideas how to develop pathway, but mm. it needs resource and funding, which you don't have at the moment, but very very good question and I would expand it not only obesity I'm, I'm sure ADHD is the problem in anorexia bulimia population as well oh. we need more research in this area okay thank you so much thank you questions? thank you Kate a very very uh, interesting talk at least for me um, it made me thinking uh, the overlap in symptoms that you have in autism and anorexia 
Um, whether the underlying mechanism is, is, is the same, you reported difficulties expressing emotions, Alexita, the uh, time yeah, that are shared across uh, AN and, and autism. But could that be the case that those symptoms are acquired in anorexia as opposed to neurodevelopmental? Um, sorry, mm -hmm. see what, what I, because I think these difficulty expressing emotions, uh, alexithymia, um, could be due, for example, to external environmental events, uh, trauma, stress. Mm. Whether yeah. that could be, uh, you know, a, a different cause than autism, but leading to the same uh, symptomatology. It is possible, but the group I'm talking about, Sylvan, it's very heterogeneous. So we need a little bit more research to unpack and understand lots of similarities between PTSD and uh, autism. But other thing we need to take in cons consideration, female autism was not recognized for a very long time. So because in our clinics there are lots of highly functional females who were underdiagnosed and they camouflage very well and they mask their social difficulties. It uh, seems to me that this is neglected population we did not pay enough attention to. Mm -hmm. But there are, of course, uh, peculiarities and complexities around PTSD, personality disorder, autism, and we need more uh, where uh, can't uh, absolutely more define, I think, understanding more the yeah. yeah yeah thank you thank you um just one comment thank you very much um one comment first of all on the adhd autism um issue i mean i think that's really important because there's a lot of co-occurrence in autism and adhd and often sure. where we find autism we look for adhd and i just wondered the, about the how the data works the opposite way around so you showed us that with eating disorders a third of individuals may have an autistic condition um it, is it known what the um extent of eating disorders are in people with an autistic condition and I like the way you showed the work with CAMS but in the adult autism neurodevelopmental services are we doing enough to be vigilant for eating disorders and if not what should we be doing? This is really fantastic question and hopefully we are going to address it in the recent MRC grant because what we are trying to do to develop more sensitive measures and to try to distribute among adult eating disorder services because relying on AQ10 is really not acceptable but it is starting point. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, can I just quickly ask you, here, <laughs> um, do you think that peace pathway could be also helpful to diagnose autism in people with eating difficulties? So I, I had a case of mm -hmm. someone that I know who was diagnosed with eating disorders but then they realized they are just autistic and they they did, don't have those signs or those um, those criteria of eating disorders. They struggle with texture, they struggle with particular food because they're autistic, but autism wasn't diagnosed um, at them because they're women. So um, do you think that potentially it could be also kind of a reversed UNO card and help women to get diagnosed with autism? Well, um, I, I need to highlight and clarify one thing. In, in specialist uh, eating disorder services, we do, do not have resource to diagnose autism because we know with good diagnosis, we need ADOS, we need ADI, parental sort of interview, as well as good observational um, interviews, clinical interviews, and some other um, measures to diagnose autism. So what we are doing instead, we are making good adjustments to communicate with people, to address their sensory needs and um, assess it sooner than later, and do all this work to treat eating disorders. But 
official diagnosis, if they are interested, they should get from specialist services. This is how it works at the moment. I think I answered your question because diagnosis is not necessarily primary aim of the peace pathway. Primary aim is to help people to get benefit from good psychological or other treatments. Thank you.